One of the questions I see discussed a lot is if the guitar is pretty much dead in modern music, and if it is, what's the point of learning to play? It seems like if you turn on the radio or you hear a pop song on Spotify, it's a pretty much zero chance that you're going to hear, you know, one of the blistering guitar solos that we all love as guitar players. You may hear an electric guitar riff in the chorus or as the intro, but even that is rare these days. Now, I went to school and college and studied music. In school, I got an A star and in college, I think I got a merit. One of the most important things I learned was how difficult it is to write a good pop song. It seems really simple at first. Most of them are just based off of four chords. There's no crazy guitar techniques and even like harmonically compared to like jazz or funk, you know, there's nothing that harmonically complex going on usually. But one of the hardest parts of writing a great pop song is the hook. You've got to write the perfect hook that people want to play over and over and over again and it's still going to have some magic to it that's going to make them want to play it again and listen to it again. And not only does the song have to be commercially viable to where it's going to be open to the masses, it's probably also going to be written by multiple songwriters and have multiple producers as creative input. But at the end of the day, the singers and the people who play on these records still need to play as if it's coming directly from just their heart because you've still got to capture the emotion of the listener because nobody wants to listen to a song that makes them feel nothing. You listen to a song because it makes you feel something, whether it's powerful or sad even sometimes, or on top of the world, it, as long as it makes you feel something, then it's worth listening to. So you could argue that a lot of the songs that aren't featuring, you know, complex guitar solos or amazing technique, there is still actually a lot of value in these songs, even if it's not your genre, you can still actually find the value in the songs. Now, with that being said, there are a few rock bands that have made it into the mainstream, but, you know, compared to 30, 40 years ago, it's very, very small amount because music used to be dominated by these rock bands, you know? So I want to talk about Olivia Rodrigo, who is one of the biggest names in pop music in the minute, and yet her last two albums were heavily inspired by rock. I literally, before I just sat and filmed this video, I just listened to one of her songs, which I already knew, but I wanted to re-listen and analyse it a bit, which is good for you. It came out in 2021. And just through one listen, I could find three different ways that the electric guitar was used throughout the song. So throughout the song, there was a rhythm part being played with distortion and a phaser, which, you know, it's good to see many effects being used these days because often when you do hear a guitar in a pop song, it's very clean, you know, maybe a picked part for the verse, but no, this was very rock inspired. And then as there was a little break in the verse and you could hear some controlled feedback, probably just used as a creative device to spice things up or kind of built, built the excitement back up throughout the verse. And then as you go towards the bridge, there's basically two main parts that I think people are listening to. There's the vocal harmonies, but there's also a guitar part becomes a prominent part of the song, which I believe the listener is going to focus on, which is really nice to see in modern music. One of the most important things I also wanted to note about Olivia Rodrigo is notice her branding. She's not a rock band, she's a solo artist. She could have had the same band backing her for her past two albums, but it doesn't matter. Her label and the people who manage her saw that her best opportunity for success was being labelled as a solo artist and being advertised that way. In 2023, it's rare that you see rock bands explode into the mainstream. It does happen, but it's rare and it's mostly solo artists. Not only has this helped her commercially, but it also gives her the freedom to diverge into other genres. As a rock band, when they change genres into pop or funk, they can often get criticised a lot because their fans are often rock fans. Whereas Olivia Rodrigo is a pop star and could basically do anything at this point and it would probably sell very well. I personally don't believe the guitar is dead at all. I do believe it has changed in its role of today's music. So take for example Taylor Swift. Okay, she's one of the biggest pop stars in the world and yet she's this acoustic singer-songwriter that has so many songs that feature an acoustic guitar. Now, I actually see a lot of hate towards Taylor Swift in the guitar community, usually because artists from previous generations are usually favoured um, and modern, any modern artists are usually looked down on. But think about it, Taylor Swift has probably inspired so many people to pick up the guitar, and I'm not even one of her huge fans, okay? I know that a lot of people my age 
are right now and she definitely has written some amazing songs I listen to them but I'm not biased in the way that I'm not a huge huge fan of Taylor Swift and the people who are probably quite young who have been inspired to pick up guitar by her will then discover different types of guitar music and will probably discover the guitar greats who actually defined the instrument okay Okay, when I was a teenager, when I was 13, I discovered Jimi Hendrix, then I discovered Stevie Ray Vaughan, then it was Mark Knopfler, then it was Jimmy Page, okay? But I didn't already know of these people, it took me finding Jimi Hendrix to then find the other greats. But some people, they'll start with Taylor Swift and she'll always be one of their heroes, but they'll also find other guitar players and that's awesome, we want a community of people who love guitar, whoever's playing it. So although, you know, guitar is still being used in mainstream music, you could argue that the guitar solo itself is dead right now, okay? But personally, I believe and I've observed that everything is cyclical, okay? So while it may be dead right now, I believe that it's gonna come back and then it's gonna go again and then it'll come back. So what this means is that it's still worth practicing and learning, not just because it's gonna become popular again, but also because if you enjoy it and it's something that makes you happy, you should just do it regardless of how much popularity you might get from it or if it might make you some money. It really doesn't matter, it's worth dedicating your time to something you're passionate about. Now, with all that being said about mainstream music, there are still some popular guitar heroes that are very much alive and well. My One of my biggest heroes is John Mayer. I love everything about his guitar playing. But I also love his singing and his songwriting. For me, he's like the perfect all-around musician. And I know Tim Henson has a lot of fans. Um, he kind of has a modern virtuosity. Personally, it's not my favourite genre or anything, but I know that he is one of the people keeping the electric guitar alive. So I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this, and I'd like to hear yours in the comments. If you'd like to support my channel, there's my Patreon page linked in the description. I do behind the scenes guitar content, guitar lessons and other guitar content. So with that I just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.